Hello, Jess Too Good here. Today we're taking a look at the Lego Lunar New Year Story of Nian set, which I don't know anything about the Lunar New Year. I've done some research on Nian, but I'm probably gonna get info wrong in this video. Let me know in the comments what info I got wrong. That's okay. Anyways, this has 1,067 pieces, six minifigures, and retails for $80, where it's a Lego store and shop at home exclusive. We'll start with the Ox minifigure, which includes an exclusive piece, which is this Ox mask up here. That's great to get, and it's rare that you see exclusive pieces in seasonal sets. Now this design actually does have the cattle horn pieces at the side where you can just see that there's a little pole connection hole there. But removing that mask, you could get a better look at his face printing, which isn't a new print, as well as his back face printing. Also note that all the minifigures in this set have exclusive torsos, and if they have leg printing, legs, but I mean, this is the only minifigure with leg printing. Love the design of that exclusive leg print with the purple and that nice gold shine. And then with the ox is this, what I think is a little stream right here. And this design actually uses some interesting pieces with the Monkey Kid Staff piece in a black. So that's a pretty cool design. And let me know what this specifically is in the comments if I'm wrong. Our next minifigure, once again, has an exclusive torso. Love the look of that one as well with just all the different designs and colors there. And it does have some nice back printing as well. Now the face print is only one-sided. For the little boy minifigure, once again, exclusive torso like all the other minifigures of this set. Love the back printing especially. And then the design of the face print is one that isn't new, but really hard to get. It only came in the Lego Land Ninjago World set. So that's a nice inclusion. He has a snowball as an accessory. And then his alternate face, he has kind of a shocked look. For this next minifigure, same exclusive torso to the set as the little boy. Love that design, it's cool to get two in this set. Covered a little bit by the handbag, so it doesn't really feel like they're just wearing the same thing twice, or it doesn't feel like it's the same figure twice at the back, same printing and everything. Face print is uncommon, it's the one they use for Lester, right? Remember that one Lester figure? It actually has no alternate facial expression. For this minifigure, we have a rare face print as well as an exclusive torso again. That design is fantastic. It's not really tied to the Chinese culture even. I guess you could say it is because it does have that little slip right there, that little envelope where you put the money in for the Lunar New Year, if I'm not mistaken. But he has a bucket and then a one by one print uh, or one by one tile that's in pink, no print on there. Again, face print's pretty rare, but uh, no alternate facial expression. And for our last minifigure, another fantastic exclusive torso printing of the floral design there. She has a shovel as an accessory and her face print is not anything new. It is double-sided where the alternate face is a little bit more sincere. So for the build of the set, we have Neon and then the structure. So for the build of Neon, now again, I don't know much about this story. I don't know much about this culture, but I did a little bit of research. This is a demon creature. It has some of those, I guess, a resemblance to those ancient Chinese lions. I associate with like the lion dance set that they released a few years ago. And this design is taking a lot of creative liberties on Lego's part because there's not really a designated version of Neon. It's like if they made a Three Little Pigs, which I know they did a book of recently, they could make their own design of the Three Little Pigs because we know the tail. There's not like a specific version of how Neon looks, or at least as far as I could research. We have the general look of Neon as this demon creature, but what LEGO did here was use some bright bluish green, some orange, some dark red, and some pearl gold. And that comes together so well. The worst part of the color scheme is just the grays that are forced at the back here because they don't produce this piece in different colors from my understanding. There's a lot of posability here too. Just speaking of the tail, each of those have a miniature bulging, so you can move those up and down. Also at the end, this is clipped on, so you could actually move it all around. And then at the front, let's take a look at the head. So with the head, I love the use of the banana piece in bright bluish green. I believe that's exclusive to the set in the, that color. And then we also have these little tassels. I, I think that's the right word for them. This was from Overwatch and I don't think they came in this pearl gold coloring. So that's really nice how they attached that. I didn't even know you could attach something in that little hole on that one by one that's modified with the bar there. The mouth at the front opens up just a little bit and closes. Nice part usage of those little Wolverine claws. And the head itself is attached with a ball joint, so you get a lot of rotation there. I also love the pearl gold pieces at the side and at the top with these little, I guess, bar pieces or whatever you want to call them. Oh, and the little horn up here, this can be moved up and down as it's clipped on. And the eyes are actually easy to spin around just how they're connected. So that's pretty fun to mess around with too. For the middle section, there's some nice part usage with the Nexonite shield in a bright bluish green. I 
again, I think those might be exclusive to this set and that coloring. I love the use of these leaf pieces where we get them in pearl gold and in orange. Another uncommon color for it. This design for the legs actually has two points, which are mini ball joints. We have a joint at the top, and then we have a joint in this middle part. But those are two points of articulation, so you get some nice poses there. And it's the same for all four of these legs. So let's pose this dude around. This is just the funny pose. He doesn't look so menacing here. Oh, he kind of looks adorable here. I mean, I feared I went into posing too fast, but there's not much else to point out. I like the bumper pieces at the bottom of the feet here and at the top. I like this part. I never have a name of this part. Just using pearl gold at the base there. That's kind of interesting. So this build isn't based on any specific building. Lego shop at home just calls it a traditional Asian structure. <laughs> That's it. All right, I'll take it. It is literally a facade though, because look, looks like it has a lot of depth there. Nothing on the inside. But still, as a facade from the front, it looks freaking beautiful. I love how different this structure is, where it doesn't look like other LEGO structures. It's such a unique design. Starting at the front, we have fireworks. I really like the use of these energy blast pieces. It's not usually used outside of like action themes, but it works really well here as parts of the sparkling fireworks or whatever. And we also have a snowman build, pretty simple. I like the use of the BB-8 body in white there, and of course that red scarf. This is what they call cabbages, which I don't see it, but that's just a nice part usage of that broom piece from the CMF series in green. And then we even have a little ladder to the left here. There's some tiles with Chinese text, which yeah, that design is exclusive to the set and that is a print, it's not a sticker. And they have a different one to the right here. At the front, there are actually two stickers, which are just at the door right there. And I like the use of the Lord of the Rings <laughs> ring piece as just the door handle that actually works really well. Other than that, another exclusive print with the Chinese text up here. Also, one by one plate design. I, I like that. I like how they use just a one by one facing forward and one just kind of in that diamond shape. It works really well with such a simple build. And then at the top, we have these nice red lanterns. Taking a look at the exterior still to the right, I like the use of these little wall pieces or panel pieces, whatever you want to call them, in red and those just kind of make up the windows. The snow detail rocks, where they use the candle piece with the unicorn horn piece, and that makes for some awesome icicles, and that's present on the right side as well. At the top, you can see some nice, dare I say, greebling design with the snow up here. Also love the part usage at the roof towards the back with the little skates, as well as these parts just clipped on. At the very top are some gorgeous firework designs. I love how clever the part usage is on these and just how well these turned out. I love the use of that snowflake piece in orange. That's awesome. And that translucent orange, I think that's the first time it's ever come in that color. It works so well at the base there. And then the ends being these little wand pieces. Ah, it's so clever. I mean, I'm a sucker for translucent pieces and all those translucent pieces come together so well for some great and unique builds. And finishing up the front, to the right, there's a lot of snow detailing, whether it be towards the wall here or these little snowy branches, which I like the use of this color for the trunk piece. It gives it a nice lighter look that just looks a little bit more unique than other Lego set trees. And then towards the back, we got more of those nice part usage with that branch piece in white. You don't see that too often. And again, the back has nothing to it, but that's okay. The front is so beautiful. That's it for the build of the set. Let's take a look at the packaging and then the final verdict. The box for this set is absolutely gorgeous. I love the designs they bring out for these Lunar New Year set boxes with all the fireworks and the ox artwork. And at the back, there's some different shots of the set. Unfortunately, no ads for any of the other sets. At the back, I find it funny that they're still using the Ninjago movie Lloyd for the win advertisements. So overall, this isn't my culture. I don't get the story or whatever, you know, it's, it's just not something I grew up on or anything. But that doesn't matter. What is here is a fantastic Lego set. I love the design of the building's exterior. It's so different from other buildings we'd see from Lego. That's what you get by capturing a different culture in Lego. And I love the build for Neon, which has a lot of posability, has a fantastic color scheme, and has a lot of different part techniques that I haven't seen before while still being very sturdy. No pieces really fall off or anything like that. Mini figure selection is fan freaking tastic with so many exclusive torsos, even that exclusive ox mask thing. 
Yeah, I, the only problem, I guess, would be that the interior isn't there, but, like, that's not even a problem, because at $80, I don't expect there to be an interior with such a detailed exterior and this fantastic build for Neon. Of all things considered, I'd give this one an A. I love this set, and you guys should really check it out. If you're into city stuff, check this out. I know it's different from LEGO City, but there's just so many cool building techniques and just how this comes together. But, of course, it's sold out at LEGO.com, so have fun getting it probably going for a lot on ebay sorry guys hopefully it restocks but that's my two cents let me know what you guys think in the comments below and i'll see you guys later peace out bye